The church could be massive on social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, those kind of things. And it's not. Why is that? In today's video, we're going to talk about how we slash you can change that. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Justin Edmonds and here we talk about the ministry of technology. If you're new to the channel, which most likely you are, please consider subscribing to get more tech tips and more thought processes on technology in the church. The church could be massive on social media and it's not. And I'm, I always wondered why that is. Is it because they, they don't find value in it or is it because they don't know how to do it or is it because they're just stuck in their old ways? I think it's probably a little bit of all of those things, to be honest with you. Like when you sit back and you think about just how we've done things for so long and how people that aren't doing anything, when they start to go, they want to do what the other people are doing. And what are the other people doing? They're live streaming their Sunday morning services and that's pretty much it. And then they take some cuts and clips of their pastor speaking and post throughout the week. Those are all great things. I was recently talking to a client and he, uh, he made this comment that he had heard on a podcast about how Disney doesn't live stream their shows at Disney World because they want people to be a part of it. And I started thinking about that and how that applies to the church. And it's not that I don't think that that doesn't apply to the church, but I do think that there's a little bit of difference. So I'll just disclaimer that right now. I think that when you when you dissect what Disney is doing and they own ABC as well, so that's kind of the referral. When the show at the Magic Kingdom in Florida at the Walt Disney World Resort uh, got replaced, it was the first time it had been replaced in about 15 years. And when they launched the brand new show, they live streamed it all over the place. It was on ABC, everything. And that was an intentional thing. The reason why they did that is because they wanted people that had been to Disney World and maybe it had been a while since they'd been there or maybe they'd never been there to get excited about seeing this new technology, this new thing that they did. And so they gave everyone a taste. Here's the one thing that we're gonna do. We're gonna do it one time and then that's it. Now there's a level of they understand that there's, you know, hundreds of thousands if not millions of people going through their parks every year and that there's gonna be tons of videos about their parks and their shows going up online. And that gets people excited and making people want to come to, come there. So I think that there's that. So how can we take that and apply that to, to our church? I, I think that there's a level of, I don't think that we can act the same way where we don't live stream our Sundays. I do have some thought processes on Sunday morning live streams that I'll share here. But I think the bigger thing that I'm getting at is when you look at that model of like the Disney World ABC kind of model where it's like we're going to live stream at one time and then ABC is going to air it for us. But then when you go back to ABC, ABC is doing television shows and they're weekly and they're exciting and they're, you know, those kind of things. I think that we can do those kind of things in the church. And I know controversial uh, part of the video here. Rob Bell did that with. Uh, the NUMA videos back in the day and regardless look, we're not gonna argue about him or what what he preached But let's talk about the quality of the videos of the NUMA videos They were short between 8 and 10 minutes. Some of them were a little bit longer than I believe it's been a while since I've seen them But the quality of them was significant and I think that they were on to something When you stop and think and let's stop and think real quick when you are online and you're watching videos on Facebook or YouTube, what kind of content are you watching? Usually it's talking head. For me, I love watching like Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon, all those kind of people. And they're sitting down just like I'm sitting down now and I'm talking to you. This video is gonna be somewhere between six and 10 minutes-ish is usually where I land. And that is for a couple of reasons. And the couple of reasons why that is are pretty data driven. So um, I don't know if you guys know who Sean over at Think Media is. I watch him as well, and he gave a, a like a TED Talk style thing about length of video for YouTube. And his his three things were were pretty spot on as like as I started thinking about the type of content that I watch. And what he said is that how long should my videos be? And his answer is perfect. They should be as long as they need to be, but not longer than they should be. And he makes the comment about how 
Have you ever tried to fix your dishwasher? You get on YouTube to find the dishwasher repair video and you go, that video didn't need to be 60 minutes long. There was 20 minutes of him talking about the dishwasher for tons of things that you didn't really care. You already own the dishwasher. You just want him to jump right into, hey, I have this problem and this is how I fixed it. But he talked for 10 to 15 minutes about all these different things and what causes that problem. Uh, so that's what he's saying. Don't give all of that excess information but keep it straight to the point. But if that means that the video has to be a half an hour long, make your video half an hour. That leads into his second point. And the second point is that usually six to eight minutes ish. And that's kind of like a rule of thumb. Like, you know, like where, where can we land that? That six to eight minutes is because the, the science and the data shows us that people tend to get antsy right around the six minute mark. And he suggests that if you're gonna go longer than that, then you should split that video into two parts. I think that for us in the church world, what I don't understand how we're not doing this is, especially the really big churches, like the elevations and gateways and the Bethels, that people have like these massive staffs and can do this. Um, why can't they be sitting there and going, hey, we're gonna make an online pastor, which they, I, you know that they already have for Sunday mornings, service live streams they have all of the, that production there they're doing it like a live broadcast television show like you're watching the grammys or like actually i think i could, would compare it more to like new year's eve like think about like seeing the guys like that are all talking up there they're freezing they're in times square you know and they're like oh you know like this year was so great and they're talking about all these things okay let's go to such and such actress or you know singer who's going to sing a song for us and then it goes there that's kind of what elevation's kind of doing and that's great i think for the connectivity on a Sunday morning, I think that that's amazing. Um, what I think that I would like to see is having an online pastor who's literally like their goal is that's their Sunday morning job throughout the week. They're sitting here like this, have a little set, little talking head like, hey guys, I'm Pastor So-and-so from such and such church and we're gonna be talking about you know, the new covenant and what is the new covenant or what the old covenant versus the new covenant. Like we're on YouTube people, like versus videos are a big deal and top 10 lists and explanation videos. Those are all super important. When was the last time someone taught you how to read the Bible? Not taught you, not said to you, go read the Bible, but like taught you to read the Bible. How do you search the Bible? How do you do those kind of things? So there are so many video ideas that I can think of right now that could be in that six to 10 minute video minute video range that are so good for the church and could be so huge and no one's doing it and yes i know what you're saying you're thinking why justin why aren't you doing it if you've got all these ideas when you do it honestly i probably will this channel is what's been laid on my heart right now so i'm going to start doing this and this is only video number two for me and i'm just i'm so passionate about this and the more I think about this, I just sit there and go, man, why is there not a Casey Neistat that is, you know, talking about Jesus and talking about the Bible and all those kind of things? It just, it baffles me. How is there not a Peter McKinnon style person that's doing this? There are so many gifted people in our community that I know you're there. We need to start cranking these things out. So you may, I, I, I talked about the, you know, the big churches and how easy this is for them because they have these full-time staff members. I think that... Uh, it's not that I think, I know. So little churches, you're not getting out of this. Not that easy. So this is, <laughs> this is what you can do. It's so, so simple, okay? You all have one of these things, an iPhone or an Android. Those things have amazing cameras. And honestly, they don't have bad microphones in them. AirPods, whatever you want. You could also get on and find, uh, I think, what is it called? I wrote it down here. It's a Rode Video Micro. They're like 50 bucks. They plug into your iPhone. You can get one that plugs in your Android and it gives you a nice microphone. You can buy like a little $12, you know, little tripod. And honestly, most pastors have a desk in their office. I mean, this, this studio here, I bought this bookshelf for about, I don't know, I think it was like $17. This is some random stuff I had laying around the house. I'm a big Disney fan, so I've got my mugs. You know, my wife got this little green plant thing over here. I bought this light from Home Depot for I think like 15 bucks. And then I spent like $25 on some paint. I'm in my basement and I literally painted a brick wall and I sat down at an old table that I found uh, that I've had for a long time. This studio totally probably cost me about 75 bucks. Bought this light off Amazon 
for I think it was like thirty dollars for two of them. That's not LED, but it's it's fine. You can buy ring lights for like twenty or thirty dollars. Speaking of which, I will link down below a list of Amazon links of A, all the gear that I use, and B, these things that I'm talking about right now. This is super simple. You can download DaVinci Resolve, which is on Mac, Windows, and Linux. So there's not an excuse, it's free. That's what I'm using, I'm using the free version. I just upgraded to the studio version, but you can get it for free. It does up to 4K, every resolution you can imagine. It's super easy and intuitive. There's tons of tutorial videos. So the thing is, is like Gary V talks about how it's not the, the quality of the content that matters, it's the content that matters. This scenario, I 100 and 50% agree with that. This is not difficult. I think that we can crank this out. I think that if you're the senior pastor or the youth pastor, or the associate pastor or whatever, you can come in on Monday or Tuesday after the sermon and honestly, maybe it's a five or 10 minute video of you talking about like reflecting on your thoughts, questions you had, because everyone here, if you're paying attention and you really are curious what's going on, you're going to always have questions because I look at it like this, whenever I watch Mythbusters, Mythbusters would go through and do this thing and they go, oh, well, we tried this and we tried this. Oh, this myth has been busted. And I'd always sit there screaming at my TV going, but you didn't do this, this or that. You know, so our pastors only have a specific amount of time to preach on something from the Bible that is so diverse and so like packed full of information and thought processes that from a 30 or 45 minute long uh, sermon, there's got to be something that someone from the staff, even maybe the senior pastor who just gave the message, maybe there's something he wants to expound on. Hey, I like glazed over this, but uh, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I realized how important this was. So here, you know, here's this. Now the youth pastor can sit there and say, hey, like for the youth group, hey guys, Sunday morning, I know that, you know, this happened and we couldn't meet, but you know, we all been in the sanctuary. You know, but this is my thoughts on this and then give a five to 10 minute and then make a YouTube channel. Like they don't need to be crazy. There's some YouTube channels that I watched for a long time that I didn't even realize the guy shot it on an iPhone. <laughs> and then this was back like iPhone seven, iPhone eight era. So there's just so many things. I think it's so important that we just need to flood the world with the word and spread it. When I get on YouTube or Facebook video, all I see is political things or the people that are actually talking about God and church things. It's all about like why Bethel's so terrible because they're heathenistic and they're worshiping Satan or whatever that may be, you know? And it's like, those are their opinions. I disagree with them. I'm not gonna get into that. But at the same time, it's like, if that's the only thing that non-believers see of us on YouTube and Facebook is the doom and gloom or like the, you know, the political spectrum of things where our, you know, our president or our Congress people or whatever can do no wrong. And like, it looks like we're worshiping them. That just drives them away from us. I'm not saying you can, you can't have those opinions or you shouldn't have those opinions. Not saying that that's not what this is about. I'm saying is that our image of Christianity and who God is and who Christ is, is represented by our Christianity and our Christian faith. And when we're not sitting here, spitting that out the way that it should be done and we're not getting people to be educated i mean how many christians how many people do you know that have gone to church for years on years and years that don't understand most of what the bible says i know that when i got uh saved in 2011 i'd gone to church the my entire life i'd been baptized everything i had no idea when i got baptized the second time yes i got baptized twice um, I did a testimonial video, which I'll, I'll uh, actually, I'll put, I'll put it right up here. Oh, sorry. That's over this way. Um, it was like learning things for the first time. And so it's like, I know for my personal opinion that there's so much content and so many things we could dive into that we could spread the word and we could make it done. We could do it in such a good way. And it's like, there's so many churches, there's so many people in this country specifically, let alone the rest of the world that could, you know, benefit from this. And it's like, oh, well, you know, if there's, you know, a thousand churches out there doing this, then, you know, there's not really a point for me to do this. Yes, there is. Get on YouTube and look up how many people vlog on YouTube. Get on YouTube and look up how many people talk about cameras. There's tons of them. 
I watch tons of them. There are at least five or six people that I watch that literally talk and do the same thing. They're talking about the same equipment. They're talking about the same phones. They're talking about the same experiences that they're doing. There's so many things. So, okay, I could just rant on and rant on and rant on. So thank you so much for checking out the video. I would really appreciate it if you'd comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you want me to talk about. Also, if you wouldn't mind hitting subscribe, hitting the thumbs up button as well. Make sure you hit the notification bell so that when these videos go live, you get notified. Thank you so much. And until next time, I'm Justin Edmonds. Uh, yeah. uh -huh.